Today, we're gonna to be going over Salesforce security and identity single sign-on concepts. In a previous video, I showed this diagram where I talked about browser-based authentication and authorization for end users. And you know, we talked about as Salesforce as an identity provider, step one is gonna come in and authenticate. Salesforce will be what's called the identity provider. It'll provide the Quark authentication. Then it'll produce a session. You'll go into your instance web server. And step three, you'll be into your authorization to your pages and your resources. Now, there are situations where you're gonna have a third party identity provider. That is a system which is managing the identity and the authentication. We're gonna be talking about the top level key concepts for single sign-on third party uh, SSO. And in those steps, you're going to have step one, where you're going to be authenticating. Step two, you're going to be passing a, a, what's called a SAML assertion token to Salesforce authentication server. And then Salesforce will then take that session and that'll what you'll use, your browser will use to get into the instance web server and getting the authorization for the pages and the resources. But what we're going to do is today, we're going to introduce the key concepts and terminology for single sign-on. So in single sign-on, we are talking about the ability for the browser to navigate between more than one service provider. Service provider could be Salesforce, could be uh, you know, Workday, could be um, any other secure system that is coordinated together under a single IDP. And what is an IDP? An identity provider. That's the green in the top middle. An identity provider is, an, is typically an industrial grade system that manages the authentication, verifying who it is for humans using the browsers. So we have the IDP, and then we have one, now typically you would have more than one service provider working together, and the goal is to create a seamless experience for the users. So a user should be able to start by, let's say service provider one is Salesforce. They should be able to go straight to Salesforce without even realizing it. They're, they're, they're um, presented with a login screen. They log in and then they're inside of Salesforce. Now then they should be able to go to a second service provider, let's say a Workday or some other um, secure website. They should be able to click to the second system and without any user interaction, they should be signed in seamlessly. Now, by doing this, we're gonna talk about some of the advantages of having industrial grade IDP um, and having multiple service providers coordinated together. So the users end up with, instead of, in this case, three service providers, three, they, if they were separate, you'd have three separate username and passwords. Um, and then the users end up reusing passwords and having less robust, less uh, complex passwords. So if they have a single I, um, IDP, a single place to log in, you can kind of raise the re password complexity requirement. You also have a centralized password enforcement. So you don't have to worry if you have five or 10 applications on-prem or in your system. And one of them just doesn't do, wasn't written as robustly. By driving all identity authentication through the IDP, you can, you can ensure that, that high grade level of security. Um, you want the passwords themselves stored in a vault and you wanna know that that's secure. And you can have a single place for password recovery. If you had three separate service providers with three separate username and passwords and each one would have a different mechanism for resetting, you know, resetting a password or forgotten password. And then if you have, uh, let's say an employee that leaves, you can revoke them in the IDP very quickly and prevent access. Instead of having to go into all three of the service providers, you can just access them through the IDP and revoke their credentials. So that's the concept of three service providers under an IDP. Now we're gonna start working some more of the details to give you the concepts. So the passwords, the credentials are stored in what's called an identity store. Um, this, if sales, Salesforce can't act as an IDP, Salesforce can act as a service provider. If it was Salesforce as the IDP, this IDP identity store would be Salesforce. 
If you're using a third party one and you're, uh, you know, you'd be using potentially using Active Directory or an LDAP as your identity store, the vault that holds the passwords. And the passwords themselves should not be stored in there readable. They need to be um, gone through a, you know, a mechanism, uh, kind of like encryption, where it scrambles them, but in a very predictable manner, and that's called hashing. So you want the password stored hashed, so if somebody were to breach the vault, they would not know what the passwords were in their clear text. You want it in an industrial grade vault, and then your IDP sits in front of your identity store. This could be the same product as your identity store. This could be a different product. And the identity provider, IDP, provides the authentication. What that means is when the browser navigates the, identity, the IDP, it's the IDP that presents the login screen, typically username and password, and then can add additional multi-factor security restrictions on. We've seen the multi-factor for something you have, something you know, and something you are, biometric. And so the IDP can be elevated to, to support those levels of um, authentication controls. So how does a service provider work with an identity provider? Well, what they do is it's done through what's called a trusted relationship. And the way you establish a trusted relationship is with a digital certificate. And so we're going to have a digital certificate where the IDP and the service provider will, will have the two sides of, uh, will have each have their respective part of the certificate. And, but there is no active communication between them. So when someone comes in to log into a service provider, actually the way in which the exchange happens is through the browser. What we have is called a URL redirection and URL parameters. So if somebody were to go straight to the IDP, their browser would navigate to the IDP, then they would log in, and then, then if they were to use, let's say, a landing page, they could then be taken to a service provider. And what's passed to the service provider through the URL is a SAML assertion. So that SAML, it's SAML response, AKA SAML assertion, is passed into the service provider, and then through a process which we'll detail in um, subsequent videos, the service provider validates the SAML assertion and decides whether that it trusts the response that came from the IDP. Now you could have the person starting the day logging into a service provider, and then that would actually pass a SAML request up to the identity provider, which will then turn around, process it, validate the authentication, and then send back the SAML assertion of the SAML response. So key elements for single sign-on are going to be the IDP, that could be Salesforce, that could be an industrial grade identity provider. You have multiple, you have typically will have multiple service providers, which could be Salesforce. They'll set up a relationship between a service provider and an IDP using a digital certificate and sets of configuration. There'll be an exchange of SAML requests and SAML responses. We'll be going to those in a subsequent video. And there is an identity store. So I hope that was helpful in giving you the details of single sign-on, some of the key concepts. In subsequent security and identity videos, we're gonna be going deeper into each of the elements, um, but you need these terms at the beginning to be able to frame the context. Thank you for joining and uh, make sure you subscribe and we're gonna continue to have more videos coming very soon. See you soon, same bad time, same bad channel.